Hello everyone, I'm a, a student of the University of Antwerp and my uh, master thesis is about um, propeller simulation. Um, in this video I will explain uh, my tutorial document uh, uh, which I made for uh, the Antwerp Solarbo team. If there is a lot of, of response on this video I will make a um, translation in English because this document is in Dutch. Uh, my mother language is... I'm not a native English speaker, my mother language is Dutch, so if there are some wrong pronunciations, I'm sorry. Um, the goal of this video is to make a um, propeller from uh, my uh, boat. It's called... Uh, the, it's a sprint propeller. Um, in uh, this video, the, the goal of it is to make the thrust and torque um, plots, so you can... Um, um, validate the results in OpenProp. Um, I made it um, accessible for everyone because um, I got a lot of my information also from YouTube and it's easier to make um, a simulation um, when you can you can see someone else do it instead of a document so that's another you know, document I made. Okay, let's start. We will start with um, uh, OpenProp. OpenProp is an open source, an open source. Uh, oh, excuse me. An open source tool you can download online. It's not difficult to find. Um, <laughs> some websites. You can download it just here online can download you will get the zipped file so over here you can export uh, this zipped file and there you can find these parameters um, so let's start with opening openprop and uh, with MATLAB and let's show you how I've done it openprop um, this uh, can you can be downloaded free online and you can run it if you run it, you will get this input screen. Um, first of all, to get the results, uh, you you need to open um, your source code because uh, I made some changes in um, this file uh, together with another student from my team, uh, uh, Sven Skatron. Uh, we changed uh, the program a little bit. So it uh, puts out a CFD file, CSV files in an um, in an, uh, new map. Um, this is everything we changed about the codes. Nothing more. Um, so if you run the code, you can get this input screen. I will put in uh, the parameters for uh, my propeller. Uh, it's uh, the sprint propeller of our boat. Um, so it had two blades. Uh, 3000 RPM, rotor diameters of 0 0.25, 0 0.25, yes. It uh, requires a thrust of uh, 0.23, was it? It requires a thrust of um, 450 newtons, ship speed is 8.5 meter per second, and the hip diameter is 0.25. Fluid density is the same, and I will call it sprint. Prop. Um, so I will also select this performance curve. Um, that's so I can show you some things. And I get something wrong. What went wrong? I made a hub diameter I think too big last time. I'm not sure. Yeah. 
that's looking better. Um, so these are the parameters we will uh, validate with our um, uh, CFD simulations later on. Um, the we will um, simulate the thrust and the torque of the propeller. Um, also, I select the performance curve, so you can also see the performance curve. If you don't select it, you won't um, get this uh, screen. And you can also see on some other really interesting stuff if you want to uh, learn a little bit of propeller theory. Um, but that's not the main focus of this video. Um, so, if you change the code properly with this file, um, you will get um, this uh, SOLIDWORKS. It has a um, uh, 20 uh, section curves, but it's all uh, propeller sections. Um, so they uh, will make a one one uh, propeller um, blot, you know, not not angle word, English word, sorry, um, but you will see uh, directly. Um, so really important also is that the section curves are um, with uh, one zero in uh, front of it because otherwise it will be uh, stacked uh, wrongly in a sim center star system plus. Um, if you start Star System Plus, you will get the screen. Uh, I will uh, choose um, six cores because uh, my, my computer has uh, six cores and six in a gigabyte of uh, RAM. So not uh, this uh, this big of a computer. Um, if you have a better uh, computer, you will uh, also can uh, refine your mesh uh, more and uh, you will have better results. But um, it gets um, pretty good results with uh, this simulation. Not the best, but good enough for me. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I'll put the screen here. And so we will start with uh, saving the file on, on the map. Save as documents, good. And Saved well, it's uh, uh, now it's saved. Um, you can uh, we will start with um, making some geometries. Um, first, we will make the propeller. Um, uh, for the propeller, we will first have to implement import uh, some curves. Uh, I saved them on my robots. Open prop. And I will import this 20 sections spline. Then I will select these 20 sections and make a loft. Get an airfoil because it's propellers. And we select none. So then you will get this propellers. I will select uh, Y, Z, plane and make a sketch. Make it a little bit bitter, bigger than the hub so it, um, it won't interfere with the edges. It will not. Make it two way symmetric. Okay. And then I will do an 
about the features, pattern, circular pattern, around the x axis, and it were I made two blades, so two blades. Uh, we'll make none, and okay, design. So now we have a palette. I will select these three bodies and make a group of it. So it's only one group, and I will name it prop. Maybe prop one, because later on I will s also, in the next uh, video, I will show you how to make a contra rotating sim uh, propeller simulation. Hmm. So next, I will get other group import. And uh, the 3D curves. Uh, no, they are done, of course. Uh, now we have to make uh, some other regions around the propeller. Um, first of all, I'm going to make a region just around the propeller. Um, th th this will be the, the this region will rotate uh, with the propeller, so the mesh doesn't has to um, calculate again uh, as to how do you say it in English has to um, re-calculate uh, re -re -re um, it with every time step, so every um, movement of the propeller won't uh, make a new mesh, so only this whole region will rotate with the propeller. Sorry if it's not always perfectly explained. This will be um, 5 millimeters extra. So from the tip to the um, this uh, region will be five millimeters from the propeller. So this was one point uh, zero point um, one one five, and this will be zero point twelve. And then next routes non do symmetric. An, ex an extra five uh, millimeters. You can see the propeller in there. You always also have to select um, none because otherwise it will um, will interfere with the uh, extrusion of the propeller. Um, this will be called. Rotate one. Okay. Next to make a refine region. In this region, um, will be uh, one point two five times the radius of the propeller, so that's this number for this particular propeller. You can all scale it up with your own um, dimensions from an open prop uh, propeller if you want to make a particular propeller. And this will be asymmetric, and will be one times the radius in the in the minus x directions. So in the x, we're going to take um, to make it easy, and this will be one five, one times the radius of propeller. This will be the region where um, I will make the mesh. Um, uh, finer, uh, because here um, the, prop the mesh has to be finer to get a good result, and you, so you so you don't have to um, uh, uh, refine the mesh around in the, in the next region too much, so that uh, that will not um, make the calculating time too much.
no, no, no. Going to make a Uh, this will be um, ten times the radius in the minus. Um, uh, excuse, excuse me, twenty times the radius in the minus x direction. So that's um, twenty times. So that's. 2.3, no, yes, no, um, yes, 2.3, and in the y direction, uh, minus 2.3, excuse me, in the y direction it will be 1.15. Okay. Um, now, oh, the sketch wasn't finished. Excuse me. Uh, I did. Um. I'm going to make a bullet-shaped domain um, around the propeller because it's documented in the documentation of Star CCM Plus and that's the best way to um, uh, make a design uh, CFD simulation of propellers okay And that sketch is ready. And this will be revolved. Uh, also non, very important. And will be rotated 360 degrees. Okay. So now you can see the propellers, the rotate region, the refine region and the domain. Um, so this is the Refine region, right? This is the fluid region, or you can call it domain. Uh, and it's the propeller, so that's looking good. And uh, last of all, I'm going to call this all name, call, call it the inlet. Um, Rename inlet to be used later on, and this will be called rename the outlets. Okay, that's all for the making of the domain. So you can see it here, it's the model and all the body groups find in here. So next I'm going to make them apart, so they will be defined in the CFD simulation. Very fine, just all of them. Need geometry parts, very fine. Okay, and you can find them back in here. So next, I'm going to make an operation. Subtract. To input the prop and the rotate. Mm -hmm. and the target part will be the rotate from cut boolean, and you can execute it. Okay, um, what's important about this? Um, also, you can make it in here and uh, give it names, and you make can you make it automatically? 
So if you use this thing instead of the um, the names, so uh, right there I just implemented it um, directly. But you can also use this thing, and then if you uh, use so like like as an example, name contains uh, prop one one for example so and then also for with an extra and an or name contains name contains uh, rotate one then this it will be selected automatically so if you make a new uh, yeah, also here of course uh, do it also. So if you will uh, implement a new propeller um, and a new rotate and everything else, it doesn't matter. If you just use the same names as last time, you can um, make the whole uh, simulation automatically. That's uh, easier if you have to do a lot of uh, simulations. So then we go over and subtract. I'm gonna rename it to subtract uh, I'm going to call it rotate sub next operation new boolean uh, boolean uh, subtract um, it will be the rotate one region and the domain the target part will also be the domain of course phone cut boolean and execute upon creation and this will be called fluid sub okay that's done um, next I'm going to make a continua new physical continuum models um, select models so it will be three dimensional it will be a liquid. It will be implicit on steady because the uh, uh, simulation will change the time. Uh, it will be a coupled flow. Uh, for more information, I also um, uh, revised my, uh, my master thesis. Um, so, for the people who don't speak Dutch, I'm uh, really sorry. Uh, turbulent uh, flow, of course. Uh, I'm gonna use the K Omega uh, gamma transition uh, to give the better results than uh, not with gamma transition and uh, the constant density. I'm gonna check it three dimensional liquids, double flow, constant density. Yes, implicit and steady. Okay, Kamega and SST and gamma transition. Okay, that's good. Okay, closed, it's done. And then you um, can see here all the models. Uh, we have to change the initial condition, the velocity, because it, uh, we will simulate. Uh, the propeller going uh, through the water, at the, the boat going through the water at the speed of um, minus 8.5 meter per second in the x direction, because um, that's also the thing we set as speed in the open prop, otherwise, we will get a different value. Okay, then for the solvers. It's all good, 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 good. Okay. Next, I'm going to make some tools. Um, this will be a motion that will simulate the rotation of the propeller. Rotation.
and the one. And I'll open that up. And it will be a rotation rate of 3000 RPM. As defined in OpenProp, of course. It's mm, I'm not sure the left or right hand propeller because I don't see the code. It could be minus 3000, but that will we'll see directly when we run the simulation. Um, so next, I'm going to um, have to define some regions. So, fluid ship. Um, no, not a mesh. Um, um, assign parts to region fluid uh, I'm gonna call it fluid and it will be a boundary for each part surface okay and for all parts fluid sub okay apply and I will do the same to the rotate rotate each part surface okay apply Okay. Then I will the servers implicit and steady time step. It will be um, one point six six oh excuse me one point six 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 e minus four, and that will be the same as one and a half degrees per second. Uh, per time step, excuse me. So this will be the length of a one time step. Okay, that's good. And then next, I'm going to define the regions. What do you do in the regions? Um, really important step because here you can see. Um, if I make rapidly a screen, new screen, geometry screen, uh, scene plot, uh, no outline, no surface, and you can see the fluids, you can see actually the domain, and I will define each bond, so this is the inlet, um, yeah, this is the outlet, and this is the rotate. So that's the, the defi definition of the fluid domain, and the fluid sub, I made the domain of it, and these are all three uh, definitions. So the inlet, I will give um, an inlet speed, uh, excuse me, uh, plus C, um, the reference, region reference frame. Uh, I will make it type not a wall, but the plus the inlet. And I will plus specification, maybe the person is good, flow. Normal. Plus the magnitude will be 8.5 also, and it will be in components, so I can define it in this manner. Minus 8.5, the same as with the continuum. So I set the inlet speed for the inlet domain. Uh, then the outlet. So it stays the same in the whole simulation. So after every second, it will be 8.5 it will be refreshed. Because if you only did initially, then the, um, the speed will change in the simulation. It's not a you don't want that because that will mess up your results. The outlet will be a type uh, pressure outlet. Mm -hmm. Physical values. That will be just the physical uh, pressure outlets, and then the rotate will stay stay the same. But with the rotate, you have to make an interference with the rotate domain of this. You see, it's, it's the same, and if you make an interference, the um, you will say okay, it's the same, so you don't have to. Um, 
make it a wall so the the, vol the water uh, can uh, the fluid can go directly through it so it, it don't uh, will make a you know uh, it'll go here and then around it now it will just go through it that's that's also what you want of course and this tree um maybe it's easier if you just make it one so if I call it um sup prop uh, if I rename it it's sup and I call it just prop prop one by default and I delete this to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now we'll import them here. So this is prop one, body one, okay, it's good. Body two, and this is zero, okay, so that we don't have. So no, it's only prop, and it will be one. I don't think it matters, but it's just more logically for me, so I do it every time. Um, then this whole domain, this whole region, has to give a motion. It will be rotation, lap reference frame, and you. Uh, it's a, this is the rotation you defined um, here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is all for the region. Next up is the um, is the mesh. So I'm going to start with the fluid mesh. It's here. This fluid. Start fluid new. Mm. Uh, operation, 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 operation. No, 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 no. Great mesh operation. Uh, mesh automated mesh. Oh fuck me. New operation, yeah, new operation. It's like this. Mesh automated mesh. Well, it's the same actually, and all I will just indicate it. Uh, surface remesher, and this will be trim cell mesher, and no prism. It's this is everything for the fluid. Okay. Call it fluid mesh. And then for the rotates, let me use me new automated mesh. Rotates surface remesher. Uh, it will be a polyhedral mesher, and it will also be print. Send. Prism layer, polyhedral. Okay, that's everything. Okay, so for the fluid mesh, so meshes, default controls, base size. I'm going to use five. Target surface size ten. And then surface size one. So this is. Between this, these two values, the um, between 0 and 5 meters, and this will be the um, starting values of my uh, mesh. This will the all the the meshes will be between this region if I don't define it otherwise. So I can do custom controls, and with this, it will override the default controls. But this, these are the default controls of my mesh. These two. Uh, I'm I'm now in making the default controls. Seventy-five. Oh, trade. I will make it user specified one point one. So it won't go too too big too fast. So it's good for the volumetric faults. 
um, the number of prism layers. Okay, uh, it's not for here. Volume gold rate. Um, custom. Surface gold rate also custom. Wait, what message? Surface remesher. Surface yes. Maximum cell size fifty. So this is a fluid mesh, and now I will make the. No, no, it's not yet ready. I'm going to make some two surface control and one volumetric control. The surface control, the volumetric control, will be on the refine region. Also, if you want to make uh, your simulation automatically, you will also use this, and you can also make it automatically. So it, you don't have to put it always in parts. Um, I'm going to make a surface control for the rotate. And then one for the inlet and outlets. Okay. Uh, for the rotate, for the refine region, I'm going to make controls. Uh, trim cell measure customize size values 0.3. So it will be really small. Around the propeller. Controls, surface control. We make the target surface size custom. I will also use 0.3, and this will be the rotate region, and this will be the end of the domain. Controls, target surface size, also custom values 0.3. Okay, that's everything for the fluid mesh. Okay, and then the mesh. So you can see here the thing is, and then the base size also five. Target surface size ten, minimum surface size one. Surface curvature. 75 growth rate also user specified 1.1 number of prison layers 23 prison layer stretching 1.2 these values the number of prison layers and prison layer stretching I uh, made with an 
Excel uh, calculating file. So if um, if you input this these values, you get if you want to buy 40 around 23 and 1.2, 1 1.1, 1 1.1 actually. 1. Uh, uh, excuse, excuse me. Prism with total thickness is absolute, and I'm gonna call it 0 0.00108. The values I get with my Excel documents. Uh, these formulas are also defined in my master thesis. Uh, following growth rates. Okay, and that's all for the default controls. Then I'm gonna make again two surface controls and one volumetric control. Volumetric will be parts. The with the refined region and a surface control. on the rotate region and one on the propeller. These are the three bodies. So this is a propeller. You can see it's here. It's the whole propeller. So first well the refine volumetric control controls same. A prism layer matching will be not defined. Um, Wait. Uh, only the refine will only be the surface remesher, yes. And not the prism layer, no. And then the 0 0.5, 0 0.3, excuse me. Okay, the next surface will be in the rotate region. Trolls, target surface size will be custom. The prism layer on the rotate, this is the rotate region, I will name it so we don't make a mistake. Um, prism layers will be disabled. Custom, target surface size is custom, and the prism layer is disabled. Also implement 0 0.3. Okay, then the propeller number, I will call it prop. Here I'm going to make target surface size custom, the minimum surface size, custom, no, here, controls, values, just parent, um, it's, it's all, the, all already defined in the volumetric control, so it's not necessary to make it also in the, in this control. Minimum surface size custom surface curvature custom and the surface growth rate custom. Okay, for the values again 0 0.04, 0 0.02. It has to be really fine around the power, so it's deviates between one millimeter and two millimeters for the size of the mesh. Um, I will make lots of okay. Surface growth rate also custom user specified. 1.1. Okay. So this will
won't, won't take too much time. I'm going to calculate it right now. So I'm using a document um, to aid me in um, using all the steps. Um, maybe I will make an English document, so it could be used for the for all the people if there is a request. But now it's only an outage. Okay, I was see the mesh. Um, make a scene. No, I have to wait. So I will just skip the video to when it's ready. So. So um, the mesh is finished. I uh, did a little mistake in uh, making the fluid mesh. Uh, the um, end of the main um, doesn't have to be um, custom. It just has to be parent good enough, because otherwise it will be too fine out here and it's not needed. And the um, in the road in the Volumetric control, you also have to select the isentropic uh, customizing the product size because otherwise it won't, will not be refined enough in here. The so then you can get this mesh. You can you can see this mesh by making a derived part, new part, uh, plane, section, plane. And you select new mesh displayer, create, close. You can see the mesh displayer right here. So you can see it here. It's a mesh. Okay. Uh, I only need one. Um, you can also make it as a scene, it's actually making more sense. Um, but then you have to make new section, plane, there's no displayer, one, one, zero, create, close, plane section two, see plot, you, this, you, Parts you just hide and hide these parts. You edit and add the plane section to the mesh in here. And this will be called the mesh scene. If you want to make it a little bit more beautiful, you can also do a new display surface and parts and add the propeller. So you can see the propeller in here. Okay. Um the admit. Okay. So so with the mesh done we only have to set up the results. Reports, new reports. I'm going to want to cut the torque and the thrust. Torque will be in the x axis, and the thrust will also be in the x axis. So both will be parts regions rotate the prop. That's why I made it only one um, boundary so it's easier to select. After 
swords. Okay. Okay. Good. I'm going to create also a monitor and plot from reports. Okay. And forgot something. Okay. Now I'm going to select the stopping criteria. Five. Physical time disabled. Just want to take 108 steps and then the file can stop. Okay. Now everything is ready to run the file. Mm. So this will take around, um, with my setup, around a quarter of an hour, it's a little bit more. Um, so if I select run, you can see the residuals right here. Oh, crap. What's this? And as long as they don't spike, it's uh, okay. So, what can you see right here? Um, yeah, and in the, you know, it's, it's here. but no. Oh, it's a little bit strange. What's wrong in here? So if I want to see the trust, hmm. Hmm. the trust is measured in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. So I change it in here. Uh, torque, excuse me, the torque. And the trust is measured in the right direction. Okay, it's looking pretty great actually already. Mm -hmm. So, with the residuals. Um, so, as long as this is the total energy flow, the difference between the total energy flow in the. in here, I think. I'm um, not. if something is wrong in my, with my explanation, and um, don't blame me, I'm not an expert, but what I understand is is a total energy flow and this will is um, in every direction and this is the difference between the ten so if they don't spike there is no difference in, in total energy with input and output and then there is nothing extremely wrong with the simulation so normally it has to stay low so this value around here it's not that big one um, the mesh isn't perfect so if you, you make the mesh a little bit finer it will go a little bit more and it will be better for your results a little um, not um, a lesser fault it's a pretty quick simulation so um, normally I um, I wait until it's uh, 180 um, time steps passed and I uh, so just as an example I will stop it export this export um, as a CSV file in another map and then I will open it with Excel I will take uh, from time step 30 to time step 180 so you don't have this deviation and um, then you can see the results the torque is around here So I will show you another thing. This is an Excel um, calculating tool I made for myself. 
So if um, I put in the rotation speed, it's uh, 3000 in this case, and the chip speed, the diameter, and I fill in I know the efficiency and all the required results and it would be the same as uh, the open prop calculating. So you can see here and here. Yeah, 15.15. That's the difference. It's open prop. Maybe something else. Um, so this I made for myself, so I can uh, see if um, there is a um, how how good my simulation was. So what I normally do is take a, take a, a an average of. Um, a lot of results, so I can export these results, an average, and then I, I fill it in. So this is the dark and the trust. I fill it in in this thing, and then I can see how good my uh, trust was. In this case, um, just don't use an average, but just say it's um, what's around here. Let's take four, three, five. It's not that good, but just have a quick results. And what's my... Uh, it's not finished the simulation, so normally you have to run it till the end. Um, I might. I will do it like this. Trust. Talk. This. The trust. Trust is 432.6. Four point six, and the torque is sixteen point five. Mm, and then I have to change, of course, all the other parameters. Three thousand. So. It's not that good of a um, simulation yet, but if you it's come not that close, but if you will run it and maybe increase the mesh size, some other things, you will get better results. But it's just a quick show of how you can make a simulation with the help Starchy Scene Plus. Uh, normally my results deviate only 1 or 2 percent, but I use a finer mesh, but this is just a quick way to simulate a propeller with a starchy simplest.